So the goal for our first lesson is to describe and explain the nature of chemical bonds, identifying and representing formula for bonding uh, and bonding, sorry, for ionic, molecular, and metallic compounds. So what you should recall is that atoms will share or transfer electrons to become stable. And this only works if they stay close together, uh, resulting in some sort of an attractive force. All of our bonding is going to be called intramolecular forces. So ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds are all representative of what's called an intramolecular force. Ionic bonds are formed by the simultaneous, so at the same time, attraction between a metal and a nonmetal ion. And this is from the uh, transfer of one or more valence electrons to make an ion. This is also known as an electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic just means that a positive is attracted to a negative. A metal atom donates a valence or multiple valence electrons to a non-metal atom until all ions have a stable octet or look like a noble gas. So a metal will appear to be empty Okay, where all of the inner core levels are a full octet, and a non-metal will appear to be full. So let's show this uh, using magnesium and sulfur as an example. So what we're going to do first is draw um, the original atom and electron um, arrangement in a Lewis structure for magnesium and for sulfur. Magnesium has two valence electrons and sulfur had six. So remember when we go around, we go one, two, three, four, five, six. So to create an ionic bond, because we have a metal and a non-metal, what we can see is that magnesium can give up two electrons. And note that sulfur can gain two electrons to fill its octet. What this results in is we get a magnesium ion that is an empty shell. And because it gave away two electrons, it has a two plus charge. We can also find that on our periodic table. Sulfur has gained two electrons and appears to have a full octet. And it now, again, has gained two electrons, so it will be a two minus charge. This is how we get the formula MgS. Okay? We have balanced the charges where a two plus is attracted to a two negative to overall create a neutral um, compound. Covalent bonds are still involving electrons, however, Instead of transferring electrons, we are going to share bonding electrons to make a full octet. Bonding electrons are the unpaired electrons in a, an element. So let's represent the vo formation of a covalent bond between two atoms of oxygen. Oxygen, remember, has six valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and again, two atoms of oxygen. I'm going to have my two pairs and my one unpaired, or sorry, two unpaired. I've drawn them kind of particular um, to uh, make it easier to show our sharing. So um, unpaired electrons are able to share. Two, uh, sorry, an unpaired electron from each atom can come together and create a bond. Now, we want to continue to pair up electrons between atoms until we have a complete octet or that every atom um, has all of its bonding electrons shared. So no unpaired electron left unturned here. So I'm going to pair up twice and I'm going to redraw this and I'm going to have oxygen here with my paired electrons that had nothing to do with our bonding. And then we can draw one pair of electrons that would represent maybe our first sharing. And because we've shared twice, we're actually gonna draw that they are sharing two pairs of electrons in between. So again, one pair here and one pair here. 
Alternatively, when we draw a Lewis dot diagram, um, and we're going to cover this in our next lesson, uh, two shared electrons makes one bond. So I can draw oxygen and my original electrons here. And rather than my two pairs of shared electrons, each pair or two electrons makes one bond. So I can represent this as a double bond. Now, if you're looking at this and wondering how I got to eight electrons um, being shared, let's take a quick look um, using this. So when we count um, electrons, we can share, we can count, sorry, shared electrons. So it appears as though this atom of oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it because it's sharing to fill that octet. We can do the same thing with this oxygen atom. This oxygen atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons around it. So notice that our, our bonding electrons can be counted in either atom of oxygen to see that it has a full octet. Let's do this one more time, um, but for SO2. So we're going to talk again more about drawing Lewis dot diagrams in our next lesson, but let's put sulfur in the middle here. We're going to make um, as symmetric uh, a molecule as possible. Sulfur had six valence electrons, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And oxygen also had six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's two oxygens, so I'm going to draw this twice. And notice how I know, because of experience, that um, unpaired electrons are where I need to um, connect molecules. I've just tried to arrange it as such. Um, when I've laid it out, if this doesn't work for you, don't fret. You can connect them across um, your entire page and then redraw afterwards. What I mean is, again, we're going to connect our unpaired electrons between two atoms to show that they could make a covalent bond. By sharing these two electrons, it helps to fill the octet. So I'm going to do that again here. And what we should see is that we have two unpaired electrons left. And so our first thought is that we might want to bond them like this. Now, if I try to draw this um, as uh, bonds instead of um, dots, which is what I like to do, it just kind of clears up your diagram. I'm going to include my original um, paired electrons. And then between them, for every one pair of shared electrons, we can draw one bond. So I paired one set of electrons here, one set of electrons here, and one set of electrons here. So I'm going to draw something like this for now. That's what makes most sense based on um, our bonding electrons and the arrangement of each atom as it comes together. The last type of intramolecular force we're going to talk about is metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is obviously for metals only. Okay. And what we know is that all atoms share all valence electrons. So let's use, um, let's say, sodium as an example. Sodium has one valence electron because it's in group one. This valence electron is said to be delocalized or that they make a sea of electrons. So what this looks like is we are going to have sodium ions. So it's given up its, um, its valence electron and it's now positive. And we're going to have lots of them. Okay, I'm going to draw just kind of one representation. Now, technically, positives are not going to attract. But I need to add in the electron. Remember, each sodium had one valence electron. So, and they are delocalized, meaning they no longer are attached to one particular atom, they are just floating around. So because in my diagram, I have drawn one, two, three, four, five, six sodiums, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, 
six valence electrons that are now delocalized. Sodium has kind of kicked it out and been like, you're free to run around. It's like a mom at the park. They don't hold on to their kid's hand the whole time. They're like, this is a safe space. Off you go. So we could describe this as a positively charged metal ion that exists in a sea of electrons. These electrons are free to move. Um, so this electron can happily move over here if it wants, and this one can piece out over this way. And technically, there'd be more um, atoms in both directions, so it would, could continue to move. And the fact that electrons can move allows um, metals to conduct electricity. Okay, so we have to have this movement of a positive or a negative particle. In this case, the negatives are able to move, and that's what's allowing uh, metal to conduct electricity. So with all of our knowledge now, I'd like you to explore the idea of why can the formula Ca2S2 be reduced to CaS, while C2H6 cannot be reduced to CH3. Use Lewis dot diagrams to support your answer. I just wanted to give a little bit of background before you get started on where on earth I got Ca2S2. Now remember when we're writing formulas for calcium sulfide, I would say that calcium is a 2 plus ion, sulfur is a 2 minus, and if we drop and cross, we get Ca2S2. So I want to explore the idea of why can I reduce this and should reduce this to CaS while I should not reduce my molecular compound C2H6. Note that hydrogen doesn't actually need an octet um, because hydrogen is one of the first two elements in our periodic table. Um, hydrogen's octet, quote unquote, um, is only two electrons because it's in that first row. Don't forget to put practice, finish this question, check in, um, and make sure you are on the right track with your thinking here.